Hello, I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we're going to meet Cindy McNally and learn about the work she and her organization, Irreverent Warriors, does for veteran suicide prevention. Irreverent Warriors uses humor and camaraderie to improve mental health and prevent suicide. Our veterans face sometimes unimaginable challenges in their service to our country and afterwards. Cindy is uniquely qualified to help us better understand and help our veterans. She is affectionately known as Mama Bear, and let's meet her. Cindy, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Peter, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I do have quite a story. And I'll start the story when Rand and I met. Um, my name is Cindy McNally, and I was married to Rand McNally, Captain Rand McNally from um, the United States Marine Corps. He was, um, we met when I was just out of officer basic training, or officer, my officer basic course, and he was just off from active duty. And he was um, a Naval Academy grad, graduated in the class of 76. And he was, um, he went to Bud's, but uh, washed out, ended up in the hospital. And while he was in the hospital recovering, the Marine Corps liaison came by and um, they offered him to fly fighters if he would come, you know, switch from the Navy over to the Marine Corps. So that was a no brainer for him. So he flew F4s for a few years. And um, when he got out, uh, like I said, I had just gotten out of my officer basic course and we actually met in a gym. We were both power lifters and um, we, we fell in love right away and he started medical school and first couple of years of medical school, we had our first two babies and uh, we realized by his third year of medical school where babies came from. So we, <laughs> we put the brakes on that <laughs> and um, uh, we, You yeah, know, it, it gets like, it gets tough. I mean, I know that. Yeah, no, I'm thinking you know, back about these memories. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful story, and and it doesn't always have the twists and turns that people would expect. Yeah, no. So we went to um, his ten year Naval Academy class reunion, and all of his classmates were suntanned and and relaxed and chilled, and and he shows up again at this point. He's in his fourth year of medical school, pasty white. We're broke. We have two kids. Life is not good. And so on the way home, he said, would you have a problem if I didn't, well, he finished medical school, but if I, instead of pursuing orthopedic surgery, would you be okay if I started flying for the airlines? And so he made that big transition, started flying for the uh, airlines, flew for 21 years. And um, we had a beautiful home in Boca Raton. Uh, we had pillars in our church community. Uh, we homeschooled our kids because we traveled a lot with him being with the airlines. Uh, all of our kids were active in sports and youth groups. And really, we looked like the better gardens and home family um, from the outside. Uh, but we are more like when you pull back the curtain and it's not the Oz that's back there. It's it's something that looks entirely different on the inside than what's what you're seeing on the outside. Um, our house, our our life, we had we struggled with several different addictions. Uh, a lot of dysfunction. Uh, both of my girls were in rehab by the time they were 17. And um, and there was, uh, like I said, a lot of other addictions in the household. So let's fast forward and Stephanie, uh, well, let's start with Sarah. Sarah was a nationally ranked snowboarder. Um, Neil was a tri-state cross country ski champion was already getting scholarships from colleges as a freshman in high school. And Stephanie went in the army and was a UH-60 door gunner. Um, so I say all this to say our family, um, we were pretty, pretty well off. We were successful. We were happy. We were content. Um, you know, we, we dealt with life, um, but we, my, my kids were amazing. We were, we were at a good point in our life. And um, then it, uh, so Stephanie was actually downrange and she was in Iraq at the time. And we got a, I got a knock on the door, the proverbial knock on the door at one o'clock in the morning. And I look out the door and there's two uniforms standing there. So of course my first thought was, oh my gosh, Stephanie's, Stephanie's killed in action. Um, so I hesitated to open the door, but, but I did. And um, they said, you know, I'm sorry to, to tell you that uh, your husband took his life tonight. And my first thought was, what, so Stephanie's okay. And they're like, 
they didn't know who Stephanie was. And they said, no, ma'am, we just need to tell you that your husband took his life tonight. It was a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And um, so it took me a while to, to recover from that. And um, I still had two of the kids at the house. So uh, when they left, I, um, I stepped away and uh, took my own moments to, to grieve and collect myself. And then I went and shared it with my kids. And then we had to go through the process of getting Stephanie home from the funeral from, from overseas. So um, that was, uh, it, it's, I struggle to this day to tell that story. Um, but several years later, we went to our first irreverent warriors hike. Um, at the time, Neil in the meantime had gone into the army. So I had two kids that were veterans or still active serving actually. And uh, we went to this first hike in Houston, it was called a silky site and we had no idea what it was, but I said, Hey, we're going to come in. We're going to do this thing for dad and uh, figure out what the deal is. So it was really at that point that we discovered um, our community and really started to begin the healing process. And um, it's been 14 years and we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Cindy. This is a story of, of life changing healing and it's very important. You don't want to miss this. See you after the break. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking with Cindy about the challenges our veterans face with mental health and suicide and, and how tough times can be when you're dealing with, with some of these stressors in your life. Cindy, you were telling us about the family and how things were evolving. What would you like to add? Yeah, so when um, you know, Rand, he was finally at peace. He'd left this planet, all of his demons that he had been tormenting him all those years. Um, he was free from that. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that he left those demons behind for my children. And um, and that is the reality, that is the wake of devastation that's left from suicide, is that you leave that devastation behind. Um, I will say that, um, yeah, when Neil, when Rand died, Neil, like I said, was a cross country, uh, a tri-state a tri cross country ski champion. Uh, he never put on skis again, ever. To this day, he still never put skis back on. Um, Sarah was 90 days sober when Rand died. Um, right after that, she spent the next, I don't know how many years, uh, went through 12 different rehabs. Uh, and Stephanie, of course, she went back down range and um, everything just became more difficult down there for her. So here we are 14 years later. Um, Sarah, I'd like to say is four years sober. Uh, she found Teen Challenge, spent a year in treatment and another year interning. Um, my son's still a functional alcoholic, but he's got a beautiful family and, and loving life. So we, we've all kind of evolved and kind of grown, but it's taken 14 years to get to this point. It's taken a long time. Well, and you've applied your skills to unique sort of 
movement here with irreverent warriors, where you take, you know, in the midst of all these really dark and testing sort of situations, and you use humor. That had to be a big transition for you to take a look at you know, how do we how do we use humor to cope when all your life has been so serious. Well, actually, it's been because my life has been so serious, and why so many of our vets, um, because we're so serious, humor is a coping mechanism, and it's a kind of mechanism that we laugh about things that normal society frown upon, and they think that there's something really wrong with us. So it's really uncomfortable to be ourselves in society today because it's just seems to be unacceptable. Um, some of the things that these guys are dealing with, uh, and when I say guys, that includes women. Um, I'm a soldier in the military. No, there's no gender. So, so when I say guys, please, no one take offense. Um, so, you know, right now, th the biggest thing that they're struggling with is isolation. You know, last year we had COVID. Everybody had to stay home. Uh, that is a really bad place for vets to be, or anyone to be, but especially vets. Um, so isolation, that that's a devastating um, contributing factor. Um, reintegration, you hear about that all the time. Um, so when you get out, what do you do? You feel like you don't have any more value anymore. You don't have um, any purpose. Your jobs that you're coming back to are you're paid less and you're starting at the bottom of the rung. You may have been an E7, 8, or 9, and now you're you know a clerk. Um, uh, relationships, you built, spent all these years living in your relationship one way and then things just dramatically change. Uh, many times they don't survive. So relationships are tough. And of course, finances. Uh, you know, you're used to BAH and your medical being paid for and all these things. So unless you're really preparing, uh, it's a shock when you come out, come off active duty, come off from active duty. And especially right now in today's housing market, it's 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 a reality. And some of the things that I'm talking about, um, I want to focus on what's happening right now and why it's so difficult right now. Um, we we got the VA. Um, you know, I don't want to get political about it, and I won't. But what I can say is that the system, they are systemically killing people. Um, uh, I'm going to give you a very short, um, my daughter, my oldest daughter, um, goes, she's spent months trying to wait on her uh, an appointment for her primary care doc. They end up sending her to the ER. The ER writes her a prescription or a, a referral to a specialist. The VA denies the referral and she still can't get back in to see her primary care provider. We're going on months and months and months of it, uh, they just hand her medication so um you know she's she's struggling um and this she, she's not the only story it's story after story after story and there's some amazing va facilities and there's some amazing va employees i'm not i don't I'm not trying to bash anyone systemically though it's broken and it's broken really really bad um now so basically what you're saying is that veterans are coming out the system isn't really preparing them for life after the military. If there's not a system. There's, yeah, that is correct. And the system that they do have um, isn't enough. It's, it's just not enough. Um, and apparently this is really leading, I mean, it might be a contributing factor to the suicide rate that we're seeing. It's huge. Of course it is. I mean, um, you know, with Stephanie right now, she's wondering, you know, she's, she's at a point that she's unable to care for her children. So she may lose custody of her children. Um, you know, people, if you can't work, you can't provide for your family. So it's, yeah, sometimes people think they're better, their families are better off without them. So these career moves like your husband went through, sometimes they're just a matter of desperation, trying to find some place that you can call home and, and make a living. That's it. That's it. And, and just, your, just your health and wellness, you know, mental health is another, you know, problem you you it takes months it actually took years for Stephanie to even get her 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 rating approved and get through the process and the system of even landing her first counseling appointment it took almost three years for that that's ridiculous well so, we're going to take a short break and then afterwards we'll, we'll continue our conversation and get a closer look at why irreverent warriors unconventional approach a strong dose of humor works and you can give us a little bit about how it is working in the field on these walks and things that you do See you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. 
Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? What? My. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and we're talking with Cindy from Irreverent Warriors and about how their unconventional approach using humor is working. Now, I use the word humor, but I'm starting out with a question that's far from humorous. Cindy, you work with a lot of vets. Do you think that they go through a world where people are a little bit afraid of them? That because they, they're, they're honored in our society, but that doesn't make them cared for and loved as much as they should be? Well, first of all, they are uncomfortable when people say thank you for my, thank you for your service. It's it's uncomfortable for them. Um, they, they don't want that recognition, uh, for the most part. Um, and I don't think that people are as much afraid of them as they are. They don't understand them, and and that's fair. That's totally fair because when you go into the military, you you are completely stripped of everything that you you thought was good, right, and wonderful, and reprogrammed. So when you come out, you got to kind of go through that process again. Only some of that's always going to be with you. So it's, it's hard to understand. Uh, I know that employers especially are fearful of hiring vets because of the, the stigma associated with PTSD. And, um, and that's, it's not fair. Uh, there's just as much PTSD in the civilian world as there is in the military world. So, yeah, actually, uh, we've had shows, and it, the actual yeah. military work on PTSD is much stronger than the work being done in the civilian world. Yeah. And so our guys, they're, they're trained to be tough, and uh, so we don't want to show weakness. And to uh, to ask for help or to um, to not fit into society is, is a sign of weakness. So we um, we we stuff it, and we 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 deal with it in unhealthy ways. And uh, but. People just understood that these guys are truly just bleeding out, and um, uh, they just need they need a safe place. And what does irreverent warriors do to give them this same this safe place? So the safe place. What we do with irreverent warriors, we do um, veteran suicide prevention hikes, and uh, it's basically it's not an athletic event. So that's the first thing that turns a lot of vets off. Is oh no, I've already done my time, you know, humping a bunch of weight and wearing boots. So um, what it basically is, is just a day of camaraderie. We, um, we, we call our hikes silky sites. And the reason we call them that is because the little short silky shorts that used to be mandatory for PT, uh, physical training uh, in the Marine Corps and in the Army, um, they got outlawed because they were inappropriate. So um, not outlawed, but they were taken out of service. Uh, but anyway, it, when you put those back on, it kind of triggers those memories, and uh, and, and, and they're funny. How can you take someone seriously when you walk up to them when they're wearing a little bit of tiny pair of sookies? It's it's uh, that starts the day with a little bit of, of of levity. It's a little bit lighter, just showing up in your sookies. And these guys love showing up in their sookies. Um, and then throw on some combat boots. Of course, that takes you back to you know to the takes you right back to where you were. And um, when you were comfortable and, and loving life and uh, throw a little bit of weight on your back because that's always associated with those, those memories as well. So it's a, it's a hike and we start off, it's a slow walk because it's designed to be, to talk. And uh, it's like a walking therapy session. And um, we, we go three or four miles, then we stop and eat and drink. Um, or we play some tug of war or we play, we have water balloon fights or we have silly relays where you tie people together and do crazy things with ammo cans. It's just, um, it's just a day of getting out in the sun and connecting with other veterans. So, it's full you day guys are doing this all over the country now. We are, yeah. 
Yeah, this next year we've got um, 83 hikes scheduled and we've got uh, London and Normandy. So we're international. So, and you also, I, I guess I would guess that you are very active in dealing with your legislators and championing the needs of, of veterans, especially with mental health and suicide stuff. How is that working? Well, actually we are non-political, so we aren't involved. It's not something, it's, it's not part of our mission. We keep our mission very focused um, and simple. We bring veterans together. That's part of why we're so good at what we do is because we don't try to spread our, our resources out. We don't try to do things that we're not um, capable of doing. We're, we're real, pretty new as an organization. So we don't focus on um, um, providing housing and financial resources or uh, finding housing for homeless, uh, but we will provide resources for that because the more that you build this network in the in the community, the more resources we have available. And of course, we'll push those towards you. But we keep our mission very, very focused. We bring veterans together. And, um, and, the and you keep are- it sort of light. I mean, you keep it light. I, I you know, I've seen yeah. some news shows showing these hikes and uh, the guys look like they're having a gas. Yeah, it's, we, we keep it simple. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's, we don't want them to have to come out and think. It's just, uh, just connecting. And the, the other thing that's really ideal about what we do is our hiking element itself is strictly for veterans and active duty. There are no civilians in that element at all. Now we, we love and we need our civilians and um, our friends and family to help us along the route, throwing out water and that kind of thing, or meeting us at the stops and setting up uh, sandwiches and food and that kind of thing. So, but the actual hiking element, the moving element itself is like a walking therapy session. And we, we have done that because again, society tends to frown upon some of the things that we say and do. And so you, you tend to put those walls up and to be guarded when you're around other people that you, that you think you might offend. So in, in the element, you're not going to offend anybody. And so those walls come down. And if you may get along great with your spouse uh, or partner and you're free to talk, you feel free talking around them, but that person may inhibit somebody else from dropping their walls. So we don't have any civilians in the element and it's, it's amazing how the freedom to just be yourself and you don't have to be guarded and you don't have, you're not going to be judged. And yeah, it's really easy to show up alone and end up at the end of the day, knowing a whole lot of people in your community that you didn't even know lived close to you. That's really cool. Well, we're going to take a short break. And after that break, we're going to invite Cindy to share some final comments and some advice, things that may not just help you in life, but help you understand the veterans in your life. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back. If I could go back and change it all. If I could go back, I would. But I can't. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity, and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Welcome back. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about our veterans, mental health, suicide prevention, and the unique way the organization Irreverent Warriors uses humor to help heal. There are lessons here that can help all of us. Let's hear what advice Cindy has to share. Cindy, you know, you're talking to a world of people that don't always understand what people in the military go through. What kind of advice would you share with them? Um, The first thing I would say is get veterans around other veterans. That is the absolute best thing you can do. Um, They just need to connect with other veterans and 
it opens it opens doors that aren't available anywhere else. Um, as far as irreverent warriors goes, um, we we are about prevention, not awareness. We're already aware. Everybody knows what the problem is. We're about prevention. And and how do we prevent you bring people out of isolation? You eliminate isolation, you eliminate suicide. Uh, now we're never going to eliminate suicide. We're never going to end suicide, but we are turning the tide. And like I said, you just connect veterans with other veterans. We are not pretty and polished, uh, like the like the recruiting posters say. Um, we are raw and broken, and so we have to be able to have a safe place to feel raw and broken. Just a day of recovery and, and just hit that reset button, and then we can go back to our to our lives and be the civilians that we're supposed to be. Uh, like I said, we get people to a hike where they're all over the country. And because uh, hikes are the springboard. After the hike, again, you've met that community that you didn't know was around you. You connect on social media. And um, now you have people that you um, that, that are watching out for each other. You see these red flags. And then you message them and say, hey, buddy, you doing OK? Let's get a cup of coffee or let's go grab a hamburger. So the, the community just expands. The hikes are the springboard. Then you meet a family. And um, you, as long as you're connected with other vets, uh, and you don't necessarily need to live close together like you are on a base, but that you know that you have them in your in your community, in your network, that they're there for you. That is the beauty of showing up to these hikes. It's a safe place, and again, you may show up by yourself, but you're not going home alone. You know. I got to ask you this question. How did you become Mama Bear? How did you How did you earn that one? Well, in a hike, generally the the problem children linger in the back, and um, I always hike. I I hike from the back because I'm always watching. And if you mess up, I I'm putting you on a support vehicle or I'm putting you on an Uber and sending you home. I don't take their crap. <laughs> well. Well, you know what? I really appreciate your candor, what you're doing. I hope that anybody that knows a veteran that might need help or any veteran watching knows that they can reach out to irreverent warriors and find some of that camaraderie and humor that can help them cope with difficult times. And I thank you all for joining us today. Check out our website, healthyiowa.org, for more information. And keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. I'm MediaCom MC22, your local programming leader.